Okay, so techniques we can do with this pattern editor. Well, the primary technique for noobs is the core technique that is the root of all electronic dance music, the copy and build technique. And it goes back to the early days of hardware, right? And it's so easy to do with this pattern editor because of the fact we can build the complexity of individual drums, bring them up bit by bit, and because of the fact we can have the drums separated by layer so we can change the pattern for one layer while leaving another layer the same, etc. Okay, let me show you. This is the core technique of all electronic dance music, the copy and build technique. Now, we're going to start with an absolute basic pattern. Back in the day, this would be in pattern slot one of your drum machine or your hardware sequencer, right? Before computers, right? You start with a basic pattern. That's it. Just shakers and hats. And that would be in pattern slot one. And then you copy it over to pattern slot two and build on it. So what we do is we just alt drag off a copy. Now we've got a copy, pattern two is a copy of pattern one there. And with pattern two here, we just build it. Okay, so. I'll bring in a collapse. Pattern 2. Then we copy that over and build. So Alt, drag off a copy. Now we have the third pattern. It's a copy of the second one. And we build again. I'll bring in a kick. But the beauty of these complexity range sliders is I can bring the kick in, but restrict it right down to its minimum complexity. All it's doing is coming in, but it's just accenting the first beat of each bar. Boom. Boom. That's it. But we've built the pattern again. Then we copy this one over and we build it a little bit more. Okay, so this the fourth one is a copy of the previous one, right? So I get this one and I'm going to bring the kick up just so it's doing two beats to the bar. That's it. Okay, and there I've got 32 bars of intro. Okay, start with the absolute minimum basic pattern, copy and build add something, copy and build, add something, copy and build, add something. And there I have 32 bars of intro. Now obviously under this your bass line would be going away or whatever, you know, bow, 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 right? and then after eight bars the next bit, you know, bow, 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 the clap comes in and then bow, 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 and then the kick gets busier, bow, 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 Bow. You know, and each of these eight bar blocks, you could bring in another little sound to, with the bass or whatever, right? But there's your 32 bars of intro. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our basic core four on the floor beat. So we get the fourth pattern, Alt, copy it over. Okay, and this is going to be our core basic four on the floor. Okay, this is a copy of the previous one, right? So we just get this pattern, the copy, and I bring the kick up to do four on the floor. Bow. Bow, bow, bow. Oh yeah, and now we're into the beat. This is our core beat. It's not too busy, but we've got four on the floor now. Okay. Now we just need a couple of different versions of this, getting each one each a little bit busier. So there's our basic four on the floor. Okay. Let's zoom out a bit. So Alt, copy it over. Okay. Now I've got a copy of the basic four on the floor version, and we're going to build this a little bit busier. So zoom in on it. So to build this a bit busier I've got different choices now. I can either simply bring the kick up a bit more busy so I start getting doubles you know or whatever amount of level of doubles you know extras I want either slightly less like that or a bit busier with more doubles. I can do that or because our drums are divided by layer, I can keep the shakers and hats high end layer playing the same pattern one, exactly the same as in all the previous uh, patterns, but change the kick layer pattern. Okay, now you'll find with these club drummers like Julian that as you change, we've got the clapping at the moment doing um, um, just doing twos and fours like that. As you change to a different kick layer pattern, the claps just keep doing twos and fours. There's very little variation on, on the clap and snare patterns if they're active for the club type drummers. So I can change and try different kick layer patterns while keeping my shaker and hat pattern identical to all the previous patterns. And as I change these different kick patterns, the clap, which is already in doing twos and fours, just keeps on doing twos and fours, but I get different kicks. So I could go to pattern two for my kicks. Yeah, and I could bring the overall complexity of the pattern up, get a slightly busier kick pattern. That's pattern two or pattern three or pattern.
pattern four, or pattern five. Now the claps are now doing clap, 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 but I can just back them off. If I want to go with pattern five for the kick, I can back the claps off and they go back to two and four. Like that. Or pattern six. Okay, um, I'm gonna go with pattern two. But I say, I can change the kick pattern at this point to get a busier version of the four on the floor. Right, and remember I've also got all the variations and, as well. Or I can stick with the same pattern and simply bring it up more complex. Okay, well I'm actually gonna go with pattern two now for the kick layer. So I've got the same shaker and hat pattern exactly as in all the other previous patterns, but now the kick layer is doing pattern two like that. That's a more busy version of my four on the floor. And now finally, Alt and copy this over again. And we're gonna go and now make our busiest four on the floor pattern of the lot. Okay, so we've got the copy here from the previous one, right? And now we're gonna make this more busy again. So it's our busiest four on the floor pattern of the lot. So um, I'm gonna bring in a percussion that adds something so it's busier again. Okay, but I'm going to bring the complexity of the pattern right up. Okay, and I'm going to actually switch the shaker and hat pattern. Okay, now the kick is playing the same as the previous pattern, a more busy version of four on the floor. But I'm going to change shakers and hats. Now, again, with these club style drummers like Julian, you'll find that when you change hat and shaker high end pattern, some of the patterns are completely different, but some of the patterns are related to each other. Look, we're at full complexity for the pattern now. Hats and shakers at full complexity. This is pattern one. Pattern three is related. It's just got more double swing hats. And pattern four is related. It's got even more double swing hats. So I'm going to go with pattern three, which is similar to, to one, the one that, the pattern we've used for all the previous patterns, but it just brings in more double swing hi-hats. Okay, and that's that, and I'll just back the, the hats off a smidge. There we are, and there's my busiest pattern of all. Okay, so I've now got three four on the floor patterns. The basic one, then that was copied over to here and built with a busier kick. And then it was copied over again and built with percussion and an even busier shaker and hat pattern. All right, so there's my three, four on the floors. But each one is, this was copied over and added to, and then copied over and added to. Okay, and there's, you end up with all these patterns. These are the building blocks of your song now. and the. The reason you do it this way is because you start with the absolute basics, just the hi-hats or shakers and hats, copy over and add something, copy over and add something, copy over and add, copy over and add, copy over and add, copy over and add. And the reason you do it this way is that you end up with all the patterns at all the different levels of complexity, but they're all related to each other. So they sound audibly related. You don't go from one to another pattern and it sounds different. Each one is a copy of the previous one with something added. So they've got an audio relationship to each other. They sound related to each other. And that's how you do it. And these are now the building blocks for your entire song. And you just organize them in whatever order you want. So let's say here, we've got the busiest beat of all playing. Let's say we're at the point in the song now where we've got to the hook. There's a vocal sample playing, you know, like yeah, 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 house, house, right? And at the end of this section, how many bars it plays for, you want to go to a breakdown. Well, you've got all the previous less busy versions to break down to. So I could break down to this one, where it backs off to just shakers, uh, hats, and the clap. So yeah, 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 break down. Break down, like that, or I could break down to this one with a kick accent in the first beat of the bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Break down, 
did it. Didn't break down like that. Yeah, that's the building blocks now that you have for your entire song. Yeah. And that is the core technique of all electronic dance music. It all goes back to the early days when it was just hardware. Okay, and yes, of course, with computers now, dance music productions are in, they can be incredibly deep and complex. But this is the core technique. It's all based on this. Uh, for noobs, if you don't know that, okay. Um, and it's so easy to do with this pattern editor, right? So there you go. There's your primary core technique for noobs, the copy and build technique. Um, let's move on and look at some other techniques. <laughs> 